Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking at the natural catastrophes that are coming up on the world. Now, this is actually the second part of a two-part series that we started back when we discovered divinely inspired text that talks about the pole shift. You're looking here at the passage from the book called The Keys of Enoch. If you're wondering why it takes us so long to put out videos these days, it's because we've been in our information download since January. We knew that this day was coming when knowledge was increased. Well, turns out this book holds a lot of this knowledge. Well, I'm almost at the end of that book. Like I said, I was wanting to read the book before I came and did any classes on it to be sure that it is divinely inspired and doesn't have any contradictions in it or anything. I've made it about 90% through, guys. And I tell you, this book is 100%. For knowledge to increase, all our father had to do was allow us to be able to read and understand this book. And I'm doing my best. Like I said, I'm almost at the end. But as I'm getting close to the end of the book, noticing that mine was a little bit tattered and I did want a mark in it, I decided to go in and get another copy. I got this first one back in about 2015. But as I'm looking for a copy now, it appears as though a greater interest has occurred in this book since then. I know I don't know exactly how much I paid for it, but it was nowhere close to these prices that we see over here in eBay. $410 for a used copy. And even when I jump over here at gettextbook.com, which I used a lot when I was in college to find cheap books, the lowest price one I could find on there is 250 bucks. But that's nothing compared to the twelve and fourteen hundred dollars that these people are asking for this book. And I must say, guys, I'm not completely surprised at the price of this book to the right person. Yeah, this book is worth more than a thousand dollars. Believe me. But anyway, like I said, it inspired us to look closer at this pole shift and all of this change in our magnetic field and all of this kind of stuff. So let's come back to the third testament of the Bible, which appears to be sold out over here at getthirdtestament.com. When he restocks, we'll be able to get the hard covers again, but we can get paperbacks all day long on the internet like at amazon.com for about 30 bucks. I would do so before people find out how significant that book is because the price of it may go to $2,000. But anyway, we're looking here at the table of contents in chapter 55. Now, in the first part of this series, we've covered the first three sections. And in this one, we're going to look down at natural catastrophes and earthquakes and see how far we can make it. This is explaining what's coming up on the world and why. Let's look here at verse 54, which is talking about how humanity has used our riches in order for destruction and pain. Instead of dedicating that wealth to humanitarian works. In other words, when we've got money and got knowledge, we use that knowledge in order to destroy one another. And I believe that's one of the reasons why there is an increase in knowledge in these end times. I couldn't imagine if man had books like the Third Testament or the Keys of Enoch to work with for hundreds and thousands of years. We would have been and destroyed this planet and even other worlds too and maybe even other universes we would have disposed of just because we felt like it verse 55 says this can't be the true life this is not the life that we would have had if it had been led by the children of god or israel as we like to call them he who contends with god until the victory yeah y'all hit that subscribe button you're going to be surprised by the keys of Enoch, I promise you. Look at verse 56. It says, To make you understand the era in which you live, volcanoes shall arise, fire shall surge from the earth, and exterminate the evil seed. And we see all of this going on, guys. Wind is unleashed. There was an earthquake in Georgia the other day. Not Russia, Atlanta. And it's even mentioning what's going on out there at Yellowstone, talking about these floods and stuff, verse 57 says these elements will show resentment against us. These elements are rising up against us. Turns out the elements are against us 
because we have been destroying one by one the bonds of friendship and brotherhood that tie us to nature. So in other words, as we destroy each other, we're making an enemy of the elements. Verse 58 continues. It's talking about calamities coming up on mankind and how the elements will be unleashed to devastate regions. But notice here how it says that the seas will undergo changes. We're not even sure what that means yet. It may have something to do with verse 59. There will be regions which will be buried under waters and new lands will appear. Is this talking about Atlantis coming back up out of the ocean? Then it says many creatures will lose their lives, even those that are inferior to man. So this is talking about the roaches will even be harmed in these catastrophes that are coming upon the earth. Verse 60 says the elements await only the hour to unleash themselves upon the world to cleanse and to purify the earth. This reminds us of what we read over in the book of Revelation in chapter 7, where it says that he's holding back the four winds until his people are ready for it. But notice that it says, the more sinful and proud a nation, the harsher shall be his judgment. So, I don't want to pick on anybody, but if your town has the label of sin city, you might want to think about moving. Verse 61 is real interesting because it's getting into the why of it all. Let's read it. It says, the heart of this humanity is hard and deaf. It will be necessary for the cup of bitterness to reach it before it will be able to hear the voice of the conscience, the voice of the law and divine justice. So this is going to be the end result of all of this. This is what's going to change humanity. This cup of bitterness. All of this is for the salvation and eternal life of the spirits whom he seeks. Talking about his people, children of God. Look at verse 62. It's comparing the events of this coming up on us with the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we already see some of this, guys. There are fire pellets coming out of the sky now. They're acting like this vegetation is somehow self-combusting. Meaning that all on his own, a tree raised itself up to about 300 degrees and caught itself on fire. I believe that as much as I believe that a guy with a cigarette lit half of Kansas on fire. But anyway, verse 62 is also talking about this ark. And we know we're going to need an ark. Like the scripture says, it's similar to the days of Noah. And Noah had a big ark. Well, the ark in this time, he says, is his law. And those who penetrate in it will be saved. So this is our way across this hurdle, guys. We're going to learn here that all things go back to normal after this event. But it will be only those who are on this ark that's going to survive. Look at verse 63. It says, not all of those who on that hour of trial will say, Father, Father, will love me. That's what we read in the second testament of the Bible, how people will be crying, Jesus, Jesus, or Lord, Lord, in that hour. And we learn there that they're not going to be saved just by doing so. But we learn here in the third testament that it is those who always practice love for their fellow man that shall be saved. So even if you haven't been keeping the law all along, you can start keeping the law now. But you would also start doing charitable deeds for our brothers, helping each other out. And if that don't make sense to you, you have to understand that it's going to take angelic help for us to get over this hurdle. But why will the angels help you? If you're too busy helping yourself, if you've stored up pantries and pantries full of food, what are they going to do? Help you cook it? No, we have to establish ourselves in their eyes as somebody who will actually help others that are in need. Somebody that they can use to help carry out their mission, which is saving humanity as a whole. But anyway, look at verse 64. It says a new flood will become unleashed that will cleanse the earth of human perversity. It says that it's going to topple all of the false gods and their altars. Destroy stone by stone the foundation of arrogance and inequity. 
speaking on all of those people who say we don't need the law and we don't need to obey what the Bible says because Jesus did away with all of that? Hmm. We're going to find out. That verse says he's going to erase every false doctrine and every absurd philosophy. So, sounds to me like our children and grandchildren will never even hear about their lies and deceit. But, let's go on. Verse 65 is talking about how the elements that will be loosed on man. Notice how it's saying seen and unseen. Guys, one of the things that I've learned from the keys of Enoch is that there are unseen elements, which include electromagnetism and gravity. One of the things they talk about in the nuclear power industry is a loss of gravity event. When they're talking about all of their redundancies and protection plans from protecting humanity from nuclear power. The one thing that they don't have a plan for or know what to do about is the event that we lose all gravity. Well, by the time this is over, we could actually know what that feels like. Verse 66 says the elements shall cry out for justice and upon unleashing themselves, they will cause portions of the earth to disappear, becoming seas and seas to vanish where land arises. This is going to change our continent, guys. And you can hear them talking about this when they talk about the pole shift. That verse that I showed you earlier from the keys of Enoch says that the crust will spin one way while the core of the earth will spin another way, basically changing our entire continent around. That's how every building on the planet is going to fall, like we read about in the Old Testament. But look at verse 67. It says, Volcanoes will erupt to announce the time of judgment, and all nature will be agitated and moved. Well, you look at this increase in volcanoes, guys. It's been announcing this time of judgment since 1883. It is these volcanoes that are supposed to let us know what's up. And some of them are getting the message. And maybe why you're even looking at this video. But many are not. Because the volcanoes are not in their backyard yet. Verse 68 says, Pray so that you will know how to conduct yourselves as good disciples. Because that will be the precise time in which the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine shall spread within the hearts. Now, we've done classes on this here, what it's talking about, the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine. It's not really a new religion. It really boils down to a new understanding of who our Lord truly is. I mean, we recognize the Messiah. You hear religions all over the world talking about the Messiah this or Jesus that. But you rarely hear people talk about our father as the creator in all of this. And you never hear about our universal mother. That's the Marian part there. The cartoons used to represent her as mother nature. She is the one responsible for our physical bodies, guys. She's actually going to be the one that has to help us through these events that are coming up on the earth. But what this is saying is that after these events, we're going to recognize all three, our father, who is our creator, his son, who is our Messiah or the word and our universal mother, our protector, our nurturer. We now know as the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, as people say. But anyway, let's go on. Verse 69 says, three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear and more than quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survived the chaos. So by now we understand when the scripture tells us something twice is significant. Well, how many times have we heard in this one section alone that three quarters of the earth is going away? It's going to disappear. That could be whole continents going underwater as far as we know. But notice that it says one quarter only shall remain, and that is for a refuge for those who survived the chaos. And that's the purpose of the scripture altogether, guys, is to help us to survive the chaos. That's why you hear them talking about how in the new covenant, the laws won't matter so much. Well, 
it makes sense when you think about how we'll get the new covenant after these catastrophic events have destroyed the majority of the planet and how we will gain the spiritual connection that we heard about earlier as we learn to hear from our conscious once again. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let's go on. Verse 70 will probably be the fourth time that we hear about these changes on our planet. But now it's talking about the timing and the closing of the sixth seal. And what can we expect to see then? It says the heavenly body shall show great signs. The nations of the earth shall lament. This is talking about what we read over in Matthew chapter 24 when we see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the sky. We're going to look up when we're going to see that. And many people at that time is going to realize that we're in the day of the Lord. But then it says, and of this planet three quarters shall disappear and one quarter only shall remain for the seed of the Holy Spirit to grow as new life. Basically, this pole shit it's going to cause the earth to open up and swallow the evil seed, leaving only the righteous children behind. And like we see in verse 71, it says humanity as a whole will start a new existence, united by one single doctrine, one single language and one single bond of peace and brotherhood. So don't let people confuse you when they talk about one world religion. All religion is going away. And from then on, we will all worship the same way on the same day. This one single doctrine will be what we read in the scripture. In the absence of man's opinion on it. And this one single language we learn in the third testament will be spirit to spirit communication. With not only our father, hallowed be his name, but also each other. As we learn to speak telepathically, no doubt. But... Anyway, I'm going to let you read into that for yourself. Verse 72 is talking about this pain that we're bringing up on ourselves. It's accumulating and it's about to overflow when the hour comes. Like we said earlier, the elements are only waiting for their signal to unleash themselves upon us. Verse 73 is reminding us that it is not our father's intents to bring all of these elements up on us. He is not the cause of this. He is the solution. And the solution boils down to letting those who brought all of this pain upon the world be destroyed in it while he preserves his righteous seed who will live on and continue humanity. See, like in verse 74, we have defiled our father's power and justice by profaning with the science of the temple of nature. In other words, we took his creation, modified it and changed it and used it to harm people and kill people by the hundreds of thousands. But he says their judgment shall be inexorable. Look at verse 75. It says the element shall be unleashed and the cosmos shall move. And the earth shall tremble. Now, we're used to earthquakes. But notice what this is talking about. The cosmos shaking. And we hear about this all over the scripture. We just never really took it literally. That the stars are going to shake. The only way for the stars to shake is for the whole planet to move. Well, I guess Isaiah knew what he was talking about when he said the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. That's the pole shift, guys. It's all over the scripture. We just didn't recognize it until now. The knowledge is increasing and letting us know what's going on. 75 says, Then there shall be horror among men, and they will want to flee, but there will be nowhere to go. There's going to be nowhere to hide. But look at this part where it says, Once we feel responsible, then we're going to seek death to escape the punishment. So that's what we heard in the book of Revelation where people are going to want to die. Verse 76 is reminding us that we brought this on ourselves or they brought it on themselves because 77 says that we can escape it. There is an escape plan for those who put their trust in the scripture and our father's covenants. But look at verse 78. 
That plan includes more than just faith and prayer alone, guys. This is the problem with a lot of people here is that we think we're slick and that when these troubles come up on us, we're going to just have faith and just pray our way out of it. And it's not going to be enough to escape the vicissitudes and adversities that come up on us. It says down here that this faith and prayer must be accompanied by a life that is virtuous, clean and good. And we learn the virtues in the book called The Shepherd of Hermes. There's 12 of them and we teach them on this channel. So check out some of those videos. We learn about being clean in the book of the covenant. And we learn about being good in the Beatitudes. So be blessed we got more time. The sinners offer repentance up until the last day. Now, getting down here in the verse 71, it's talking about the global earthquake. But then it starts to mention the sun here, which shall cause glowing rays that shall burn the surface. And we learned in Isaiah also that the sun is about to get seven times hotter than it is now. And that explains all of these heat waves that are going on. With cattle dying by the thousands from the heat. How many states are under a heat advisory now? You should be checking to see if your state is under one. Because you see here it says the continents from one end to the other shall be touched by the pain and every corner of the earth will suffer the purification and no creature shall escape the hardship and atonement talking about this heat coming from the sun burning our planet scorching us this is a big event that's coming up on the earth guys and that's what the scripture is all about is helping us to prepare for it letting us know that it's coming and telling us what we're supposed to do during this event and even giving us hope that it's all going to be all right in the end. Like we see there in verse 80, where it says, After this great chaos, the nations will recover calmness and the elements will quiet. So all things are going to go back to normal. It says, After my stormy night of the world, the rainbow of peace shall appear. All will return to their laws, their order, and their harmony. So, Turns out, being obedient to the scripture, reading the word, and understanding our Father's plan and requirements on our life is what's going to be what gets us through this event. All else will go into the spirit world, where we learn that they will stay there for a while as we recover the earth, building our houses and our roads back, all in the absence of evil. And when they return in their glorified bodies, some of them will still have an evil nature, but the world at that time won't have it. The rods will never be spared again and the children will never be spoiled again. So let's go on. Verse 81 says, again, you will see the clean skies and the fertile fields and the water in the current shall regain their purity and the sea shall be gentle. So everything calms back down. Guys, I say again, it's just really a bump in the road, but we have to see this bump coming. Else you're going to be like that guy who's looking in the back seat when you hit the bump. Yeah, that trip to the chiropractor is going to go through the spirit world. Better pay attention. And for those who are paying attention, they'll start to see the trees grow back with fruit and flowers. The prairies will return to normal and the fields will have an abundant harvest probably from all of the volcanic ash that will act as fertilizer. But it says, man will be purified and healthy and will return to feeling worthy and will find prepared the road to his ascension. This is talking about the hour of the conscious and how at that time we'll hear the vibrating echo of the trumpet and mankind will start to understand where we're really at in all of this universe and how all of these things are playing out those are not aliens up there guys there are our spiritual brothers and at that time not only will we know that but we'll be able to communicate with them verse 82 says all beings shall be cleansed and free of stain from their very beginning 
talking about those who will be returning in their glorified bodies. They're never going to have the opportunity to learn hate and evil anymore. Because those who survive this chaos are just not going to allow that to happen. Neither were those angels we were just talking about. These people will be worthy of possessing this new time that approaches. New Jerusalem. New heavens and new earths. A new world this is going to be. A new humanity established on firm ground. We got to get ready. We got to prepare. And what is this preparation? It's the law. The covenant. All of the covenants. Obeying the scripture. Those down in the comment section that's going to be quick to say we don't have to do what the Bible says. They're actually right because it's not necessary to obey the scripture for where they're going. But for where we're going, not only do we have to obey the scripture, but we actually have to have love for our brothers and help one another. So find some ways to do some charitable deeds for people. Don't sit there and act like you have nothing to offer. That's called stinginess. And I started to do a video called There Will Be No Niggards in Heaven. That means there are going to be no selfish people making excuses on why they can't help others in the kingdom of heaven. Everybody there will not only be an expert in the law and obedience to the Bible, but they will also know how to help one another. So let's get started now by pushing the like button, sharing this video, leaving a comment and praying for each other.